think you'd be as far as what uh, profession do you think you'd be in if you weren't a writer? Uh, if I were not a writer, I would be in computer science. I have a computer science degree. I have worked at a couple of different companies doing programming over the years. So I would be sitting in an office writing code for websites, probably, if I weren't a writer. You also, um, on your website, says you're a speaker. Uh, what if... What are some experiences you speak to students in different schools? Do you have like a favorite uh, story or experience as a speaker? Oh, that's a good that's a good question. Um, yeah, I've been speaking in schools for ten years, and uh, I'm very lucky that I get to go and talk with students about writing and mental health. You know, those are the topics that I really focus on. Um, one of the better experiences I've had was I went to a school in Morency, Michigan, which is a small town in southern Michigan. I've actually been there several times to speak. It's really great. They're just, it's, like, it's a hotbed of support for my writing. And um, I read a story from my first book, Teen Angst Now. Uh, it's a story of me and my friends protesting Take Your Daughter to Work Day when we were 13. We thought it was sexist and we made these signs and we went down in our neighborhood and walked around protesting take our daughter to work take your daughter to work day and now you know years later i don't know if you know this but take your daughter to work day is now take your child to work day they changed it and uh so as sort of a joke when i would read this story i would always stop at that point and say well you know they actually changed take our daughter to work day to take her child to work day and do you know why that is? That's because of us. That's because we won. And that's because of our protest. And this kid in the audience raises his hand, and I'm like, yes. And the kid goes, yeah. yeah don't you think that was just a coincidence? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. So there are little moments of uh, connection with students that are very cool at the uh, speaking at schools. As far as connecting with your readers, um, you keep a fairly updated blog, and what I found is a lot more young adult authors keep an updated blog than maybe adult writers. Do you think it's important for young adult authors to keep that to connect and find more readers? I think it's important for all authors to have a blog that is updated, you know, once a month at the... I mean, it has to be updated every day, but I think it's a matter of content. Content is king. Have you ever heard that phrase? Content is king? Yep. So, so, when a reader comes to your website, what they want is content. You know, they want stories. They want humor if you're a humor writer. I suppose if I were a horror writer, they would want scary stuff. They want cool links. They want, they want stuff. And if you're not providing any, you know, there's a big gap between when books come out. The way the book industry works, it's just, I mean... I, I, no matter how prolific you are, you're still going to have gaps of months and months and months, if not years, between when books are released. So you've got to continue to give your audience something so they don't forget about you. Uh, I'm not sure why more adults, why more young adults authors would be keeping updated blogs than adult authors. Uh, I, I, I think no matter what field you're in, if you're an author, you should be keeping a blog that's updated, you know, once a month, just to keep giving people more content so that when they, they know that you're alive, you know, it's unfortunate that we have to think that way, but I mean, if you if your blog isn't updated, are you really alive? That's what, that's how people think these days. Do you have any advice to aspiring young adult authors? Aspiring young adult authors specifically, um... I don't have any advice to young adult authors as opposed to any other type of author. Uh, the advice that I have that um, sometimes surprises people is I, I tell young authors, not young adult authors, but authors who are you know, 13, 14 years old who email me telling me they want to write books, I always tell them, you, know, you should start off not trying to write a book. You should start off trying to write a shorter piece uh, because the process of writing a book is very long and difficult and draining.
planning, and it's possible that you'll get stuck writing a book. Norman Miller, I just read this, said, you know, the problem with writing a book is you can make a wrong turn on page two and not realize until page 307. Uh, and so it's, I always tell young people starting out to, to start writing shorter pieces, start writing short stories, short fiction, essays, op-eds, humor pieces, and go from there as opposed to starting right out with a book. My advice to young adult authors, if I had to give something specific, is, you know, the young adult book community is a pretty open community, and if you have a book and you want to get the word out about it, you'd be surprised how easy it is to just email people like me or John Green or David Levithan or Rachel Cohn or Megan McCafferty. You know, you might be surprised how easy it is to contact those people and just tell them, hey, I've got a book. I would love, I love your books. Can you help me out with my book? And if they can, you know, they'll help, and you, you'll never know if you don't ask. So I've been uh, completely amazed just from the response I've got from emailing authors about, you know, my channel and these interviews. I really didn't expect to get any responses. Well, you, I mean, it's, it, you know, I, I it's, it's very flattering and nice to be interviewed. I mean, it feels good. It's, there's no, there, you know, you're, it, 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 it makes you think you're doing, uh, I understand what it's like because when you're on the outside um, trying to contact these people, you think that they're all oh, they're authors and they're they have big important lives and they don't have time to do this and that. But um, authors don't really have very important lives. Well, do you have anything else that you'd like to add? Any question that you you know wish I'd asked? Uh, well, I. You know, I got this movie this, this, that, that I'm, I'm excited about. So it's kind of a funny story is the name of the movie. It stars Zach Galifianakis, Kier Gilchrist from United States of Terror, Emma Roberts, Zoe Kravitz, Viola Davis. It's directed by Ryan Fleck and Anna Bowden, and it comes out September 24th, 2010 in New York and Los Angeles. So please, please go friend it on Facebook and um It'll be expanding to more theaters after initially being in New York and L.A. Where are you located? Um, I'm currently in Connecticut, but I'm going to go to um, grad school at the New School in New York City. So, awesome! Yeah. See the movie! I will. A huge, 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 huge deal. Uh, the, the, uh, you know, you have to understand, like, the, um, you, you might think in your head, wow, Ned's in a great position. His movie is going to be great. It's got Zach Galifianakis in it, and he's a big star. No, don't think that way. The way you should be thinking is, if I don't see the net, the movie that's based on it's kind of a funny story, it will be a failure. I've got to see it personally and bring a lot of friends. That's the kind of, you know, I try to, I mean, I, I, every, 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 bit help, every bit helps. It's Every single person who sees this movie, like if I could personally, hug you and thank you, I would. It, it, it means it's from, that's how movies become successful.